cheating. I wanted to get a good group for a change. Okay, I'm shooting an old 45 Colt. And you know, they're not very accurate, right? Yeah, see our video on accuracy. Yeah, good to see y'all on this beautiful fall evening. It's nice out. And I want to tell you about this revolver. You probably saw the title. Something about 1909, right? So yeah, this is a beauty. Uh, actually a military assault revolver. Yeah, adopted essentially back in 1909. Yeah, this is one of those old guns, vintage guns. They're help. Uh, let me take it over here and show it to you. How's that? That makes sense? <laughs> so hopefully it's uh, not going to get too dirty on me. But uh, I've been shooting it some and it seems to work fine. And we're going to talk about it. We so let me uh, tell you about this gun. Now, i got a bunch of firearms laid out here. You know me, it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't take much for me to bring out some cool firearms. Uh, you know, I just love these old firearms. And uh, there's a reason for every one of them that's out here, believe it or not. Even that stainless thing that doesn't seem to fit, all right? Well, I'm not going to, uh, I always say that, don't I? But I'm going to take two hours on this. The video is mainly about the 1909, okay? Big 45 Colt revolver used by the military for a couple, well, more than a couple of years, but kind of officially for a couple of years there, around 1909, 1911, you know, uh, through that time frame. But I wanted to give you an idea where it fits. The big old uh, new service revolvers, you know, were, were big, you know, there for a period of time. So going all the way back to 45 Colt, uh, you know, the, the Colt Single Action Army in 1873 that was adopted, uh, we were using a 45 Colt, you know, this cartridge. Yeah, you know, one you just saw me shoot, 45 Colt. And till 18, what, 92, I guess. And then we went to this uh, 38 Long Colt. And that's, I've got some of those out here. Uh, that's a 38 Special, just to give you an idea of the difference. But this is a 38 Long Colt, all right? And in 1892, we went to that as the military sidearm. Okay, fairly small round. It's not even as long or as powerful as the 38 Special, which came a little bit later. Okay, and so that double action uh, revolver, uh, Colt was you know, a pretty nice revolver, uh, swing out cylinder and you know, easier to load and all that kind of thing. But it was fired, it fired, chambered the 38 long Colt. Well, you know the story. I won't belabor it again. I've told it, I guess, and you're familiar with uh, what happened in the Philippines in, what, 1898 19, through 1902, along in there, the, the Philippines, it's called a lot of different things, the Amer Philippine-American War, and the insurrection, and then the problems even after that, uh, how we had difficulties with this round, this gun, this round, uh, stopping highly motivated uh, folks <laughs> that would come charging at our troops with with knives, guns, on drugs, uh, something kind of like meth, I guess, and with suicide and homicide in mind, okay? Not worried about their own death, uh, just wanting to take our soldiers out. So a very difficult situation to be in. Somebody's coming at you and they don't care if they're gonna die, they know they're gonna die, and you gotta stop them quickly. Well, this round uh, didn't exactly uh, uh, serve as a, a stopper in every case, okay? And a handgun is just a handgun, whatever the caliber is. But you can imagine uh, that little 38 long Colt, which would be lethal, but it needs to be lethal quickly if, if possible. So anyway, got a bad reputation during that time frame from the reports coming back in from the Philippines. Okay, so, it just so happens that, you know, the new service revolver, these big old 45 Colt revolvers, double action, uh, had come out with 1898. So they were around. And so our military, in its great wisdom, you know, say, hey, you know what? We need to get some bigger, bigger guns, some bigger cartridges in the hands down there. They even brought out the Colt single action, which is why I have it out here too. They, they're mostly, I think, were the artillery model where they cut these down to five and a half inch. Uh, but they're, you know, the military firearms, which was typically, most of them were in seven and a half inch. And uh, this one's from 1883, made in 1883. 
And they said they cut them down, called them the artillery model, length five and a half inch. And they issued those. They needed 45s. They needed 45s. And then, so the new service and the Colts jumped into action. The uh, 1911 wasn't quite out yet, right? Because, uh, you know, 1911. <clears throat> and uh, so we put a lot of 45 caliber firearms uh, in, excuse me, in the hands of the soldiers, whether it was a single action or these big new service revolvers. These were very popular. This one's a commercial. I've had this a long time. I've got videos. We have videos on every gun out here, okay? And uh, this is the military model of the new service. And I don't, do we have a video on that yet? Uh, I guess not. Well, wait a minute. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. So probably there will be a video on this firearm by the time you see this. That makes sense? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> So there would be videos on all these, and uh, I'll try to link maybe to some of them. But uh, so this is essentially just a new service revolver, you know, this 1898. And so the military, I, and I think adopted is the correct term, uh, this firearm in 18 or 1909 uh, as the sidearm. We needed something bigger. And so this was official. Now, again, we pulled out a lot of these things and got them to the soldiers, got them in their hands. But so we just went to this sucker in 1909. And you know what was coming pretty soon, right after that? Yeah, this baby, and this is an actual 1911, John's 1911. So this has a, the dubious distinction of maybe saving the day in a lot of ways, these big new service revolvers, as well as the old Colt single action. Uh, but it was short lived as far as an officially adopted military firearm, handgun, sidearm, you know. So uh, for a couple of years, though, at least, and then, of course, it was used. They were made for a little while, at least in the military version of it. But these things were made, these new service revolvers, up in, I think, through like 46, 1946 or something. And so they played a role in, gosh, World War I, World War II, for a long time, even Vietnam and the ACP version, which we get up to. But uh, so these, these were very popular, big old guns. It's For us, it's like... Uh, they're just like almost an anachronism. They're just big old gun. My gosh, who'd want to carry a big old gun like that? But you got to think back in time, uh, a big old gun was this, you know? So these were not any bigger and they were double action and they were smooth operating and quick to load, quick to unload, uh, you know, more efficient than say a Schofield or anything. You just swing it out and unload it real quick, you know, and pop them out and put more in. So. So they're very, very popular. And police, they were, they were shipped all over the world. I think the Royal Canadian Mounted Police carried the new service revolver. We sold them to Cuba. We sold them to, to Britain, to everybody. They're very, very popular, used in uh, both world wars and beyond. Okay, so I'm bragging on the new service. They're, they're just great old guns. Uh, so like I say, 1909, that's, that's the gun. It was a U.S. handgun. And, uh, and then in 1911, of course, we adopted this this semi-automatic firearm, I think. Who designed that? Was it John Browning? I think so. And, of course, that was the official uh, firearm, sidearm. Not to say we weren't still using the 1909, because we didn't have enough uh, 1911s, you know, uh, ever, hardly. So, and then every time the war would come back, World War II, we would need more guns, and we'd break out the new service revolvers. And generally, though, by World War I, uh, most of them, they were chambered in 45 ACP. Same gun. So these, these firearms are the same, essentially. Uh, this is the, the, the early version, 1907. This one was made and commercial. And then this is the same firearm, but military, you know, okay? And it's even got it. Don't tell anybody, but it's got United States property on the bottom of the barrel. Oh, my gosh. Should I even have this in my hand? United States property, and on the butt in there, it's got U.S. Army, model 1909, the serial number, and all that. <laughs> so, uh, interesting, five or six of these out here have U.S. property on them. So, uh, so, so uh, the, the same gun, except then, for World War I, we took these, and Smith & Wesson made one, too, a, a version of their big triple lock, you know, hand ejector model, and chambered it in 45 ACP. And Smith & Wesson came up with these clips uh, half moon clips and uh, and Colt used them too. I think uh, they got permission from Smith and Wesson 
and you know you just pop those in and that worked a lot better they rebated the chamber so the rounds wouldn't just fall all the way through uh, but the clips of course worked great some of the early models uh, the chambers was just like the 45 Colt or it just went all the way through and the rounds would just go on in there you know, so you couldn't shoot them unless you had these clips but then later they say chamber them so that you could even without the clips you could put the round in and this one's like that i fired the thing you can come out here with just a handful of rounds i don't have one handy and you can just put them in there and fire them it's just that getting them out you've got to punch them out with something a stick or something okay and sometimes they'll just fall out all right but anyway so the new service evolved into the 1917 model uh, using the shooting why i wonder well this 45 ACP, if you're new to shooting, you know, it uses this same cartridge, the 45 ACP, 1911. And so by World War I, you know, we had a lot of these made, not enough. Let's just chamber the old new service revolver, or the 1909, whatever you want to call it, uh, in 45 ACP, which didn't take a lot of work, did it? Just uh, change the chambering a little bit. And 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 I think the Colt Smith & Wesson is some modification to handle the the clips better than block clips but it's same gun same gun essentially and they're both fun to shoot they're just a blast they really are this one was made in 1917 actually it's a model 1917 and it was that one was made in 17 i think this gun was made in 1918 this uh 1909 military new service was made in 1911 okay so don't, not to confuse you like that's a model 1911, but it was made in 1918. This is a model 1909, topic of the video. It was made in 1911, okay? So, you know, I've talked about that before. You got model, like this is a model 1873, Colt single action, the model, but this one was made in uh, 1884. Did I say 1973? 1873 is when they came about, and so it's a model 1873, made in 1884. All right, and this is a model uh, 1892, and I tell you the truth, I forgot. We've got a video on it. It was made in, I think, uh, 1902, maybe. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so a uh, little aside there just to uh, make you smarter. How's that? And this was made in 1907, even though they came out in uh, 1898, the new service. Let me put them back in order here in order of uh, showing up, okay? So, huh. And then we'll shoot this a little more. I brought out a new end frame over here, a Smith & Wesson that you saw uh, for a reason. Before I get to that, though, let me remind you about someone else who supports us. It's Apex. Excuse me. <laughs> Atmex. Atmex. <laughs> I got so excited about these guns. But, yeah, the American Precious Metal Exchange, we're so happy to have them on board. It has a big old 10-ounce piece of pure silver that they offer and silver dollar, you know, all kinds of things. Go to their, their uh, site in our uh, description or appmex.com. Really appreciate their help. It's cool having them on board. Not gun-related, really, but, man, precious metals are, you could say, precious, really. So this is the end frame I brought out. Just, again, I think... We, we tend to think of these old things as clunkers and who'd want one and you know, they ain't fun to shoot. Well, they're just essentially a big old end frame. Now, I know it's Colt versus Smith & Wesson here, but I don't know they're any bigger than an end frame, you know. And, you know, so many of us love these things and shoot them all the time and for various, you know, chamberings and everything. So I think one thing that makes them seem so big, I was telling John, is the grips are a little smaller. You don't have the big magnum grips on these and the grip feels kind of smallish and makes the gun seem a little bit bigger. It's just a, essentially an end frame, you know, size firearm, okay? And they were chambered and, oh my gosh, 44 Special, 4440, uh, even 357 Magnum later when, when it came out in 35, 36. Uh, a lot of the 455 Webley, we sold a lot of them to the Brits and so lots of chamberings because obviously with their size, they would handle really anything that you wanted to chamber. A 30, I see, 3840 uh, you know, and, and others, some of the foreign uh, uh, chambers I'm not as familiar with for other countries. You know. So great guns. Let me shoot the thing here. Okay, put some more ammo in it. This one is, seems to be in good shape. And I like these old things. A lot of people might consider all this stuff here on the table really it's kind of FUD guns or revolvers. Well, I'll tell you what, you can call me FUD any day. 
if you can't appreciate and enjoy the history of these things, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you. <laughs> let's take a couple shots with it. Uh, let's shoot a pumpkin. Wouldn't that be appropriate? All right. Right in the middle. This is a Kentucky two liter. They're even pretty good for bowling. <laughs> or uh, hitting a stop sign. Boom. How about, uh, there's another bowling pin ought to be hit. I think the sights are on. Now, I haven't had to adjust them yet. Quick. Uh, I was going to adjust them a little bit. I couldn't find the screw uh, back there to, to adjust them. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny, huh? Yeah, you don't adjust these too well. You might adjust them with a pair of pliers, you know, on that front side or something. But uh, just neat old revolvers, uh, extremely popular in the day. You know, police would carry them, like I say, uh, various agencies. Uh, again, think back in time, you know, what were the other choices? You know, uh, and I think a lot of people have the, I don't know, the uh, impression maybe once the 1911 came out, because you're thinking about today, 2019, uh, you know, so many people carry a pistol, a, a semi-automatic. And I think it's easy for maybe a, a novice, a new shooter, somebody to think, well, when the 1911 came out, I guess, you know, everybody could throw away those clunky old revolvers. And everybody was carrying one of these, I guess. Not exactly. Even when I got into firearms in a bigger, bigger way in the 70s, 1970s, not the 1870s. I was still real young in the 1870s. Uh, I, I didn't know a lot of people that had these. I had one. I got one. And, uh, you know, people were still carrying revolvers in the 70s and the 80s. And it was really these newer, uh, believe it or not, uh, polymer wonders that got people, I think, in mass into semi-automatic pistols. Now, there are people carrying them, a lot of folks, but, but it's not like everybody was. And back through the uh, 40s, the 50s, or 30s, or whatever, okay? But they've always been popular, though, among certain groups. So, uh, revolvers ruled, and uh, it was an interesting time uh, because it was really... Uh, I don't know, the, the, it was, what am I trying to say, the, the success or, uh, or the effectiveness of whatever you're carrying on your side, it was largely determined by what revolver you had, you know, up until 1911, and then a lot of people didn't have them, uh, you know, after that at all. So, let me load it up again. I'm going to shoot some of these hollow points. Whoa, wow, it could be dangerous, huh? We appreciate that help, getting all this ammo. Look at that. So, let's uh, put six of those in there. I guess I won't shoot everything. Well, we've got to put one on the gong, though, don't we? Before it gets dark on us. Let's see. I don't know. Boy, it's a fine little sight. Uh, I think it's close. We'll find out. All right. Wow. Oh, that felt good. I'm uh, not sure whether I'm going high on it or low. I'll try that red play on the left, the big square one. I heard a pop. Let's try the buffalo. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Well, let's just pop this old cowboy here. <laughs> Good shooter after all this time. Uh, 1911. My gosh, that's almost a hundred years, you know, since this thing was made. Uh, I'll tell you what. Like I gotta say, if you if you can't enjoy a revolver, come on, get in the game. Yeah. So now that that might be one cylinder. I don't know if it's dirty or tighter or, or what. There. I noticed each time I shoot, that one cylinder is a little tighter. Uh, but just a lot of fun. I, you know, I've preached that religion a long time, right on revolvers, trying to get y'all into them. They're, uh, they're just special. And these historical revolvers, it's, it's hard to beat. Oh my gosh. So they made a lot of these, and they were very popular. 
is kind of the, one of the points of this. A lot of people, I think a lot of people, just like this 1892-38 long Colt model, I think even a lot of people who are fairly aware of uh, the history of firearms, uh, this is an area where a lot of people were not uh, that familiar with. I know I wasn't. Uh, you know, we think back to, the, of course, the Colt single action. And then sometime in the 90s, we went to a 38. I guess it was like a Model 10 or something, you know. And then we started thinking about the, the Model 1911s, you know, and then the Berettas and, and the M17 now. You know, it's kind of the, 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 the biggest, the main sidearms, you know, in cartridge guns at least. And uh, a lot of people, I think, are not as aware of this 1892 model. And, and maybe even this uh, 1909 the people are kind of familiar with uh, new service revolvers that this was actually the military version it says right on it u.s army they made some for the navy i think it's only about a thousand in similar numbers for the marines and those are a little more collectible because they're just rare and i better they're just you're rare more rare you yeah. uh, so i don't know i just it's just part of uh, our responsibility our job is to kind of fill in some of the gaps at least the major gaps you know, I I don't know everything about all these and all all the history. You could write ten books just on that that revolver and another ten books on that one, and, and people have. You know, uh, you know, you'd have to go to uh, Gun Jesus to Ian to get all that information. <laughs> but uh, I'm just a shooter. I'm a jack of all trades, and I have an interest in uh, John too in the history of these. Excuse me, I'm still dealing with my teeth and everything, but. We have a lot of interest. Uh, we really appreciate, uh, both of us, the history of these firearms, and we find it interesting learning about them and shooting them and everything. This that probably we don't go in as much depth, you know, as, as, as some other folks thankfully do. But we want to bring you the basics and, uh, you know, and share it, it with you, kind of give you a, help give you a, a good understanding of where most of these fall. Let me take a couple more shots because I'm not going to let you go while I've got, well, no, I'm not going to shoot all the ammo. I'm going to shoot a couple more times. Uh, so what did I not tell you? Uh, oh, I thought it was interesting in my reading. I, I read that, uh, and I forgot, I, I really knew that, I guess, that this was really the only big frame, large frame double action that Colt made uh, until 1990 when they made the Anaconda, you know, you know, wild. And, and I, I know that well because I lived a lot of that. I remember all through the 70s and the 80s, we were hoping Colt would come out with a uh, 44 in, in, in a Python, you know, and I don't know that the Anaconda really is a 44 Magnum. Uh, Python. It looks like kind of like one, but as far as quality and exactly the way it's made, I don't know that it really is. But Colt has just always been reluctant. Uh, you know, and this is another, uh, that's another video, another story. But you know, Colt has has kind of survived on their military contracts through the years. You know, this <laughs> Colt single action, beginning even back before that. You know, even the M16s and different. And they've not been uh, very receptive to the commercial uh, wishes of just civilian shooters. They've been always really slow to react. And that's one reason they have so much financial uh, trouble, I think. One of the reasons, because uh, we've just been frustrated with them for decades uh, in terms of how non-receptive they seem to be in making some of the guns that, that people want. You know? And uh, they got, I think, a little bit lazy with all those military contracts and didn't need to. Uh, and and that, that Python was one of the best examples, you know, I think, not offering a gun like that uh, and, or even coming out with a 44 Magnum, you know, for all those decades when that was an incredibly possible, uh, uh, incredibly popular, trying to say, uh, chambering. So anyway, but uh, these old Colt revolvers are, they're just special. They really are. Uh, U.S. Army model 1909. So... If you were not aware, this is one of the military sidearms of the 20th century. Just not all that long, at least officially. Like I say, these things played a role, especially in the 45 ACP version, the, uh, for, the uh, model 1917, both in Smith & Wesson and Colt, all, all up through World War II, even Vietnam. There's always a need for more firearms uh, when, when war breaks out. Yeah, there's always a need... And it may be that, like, the guys on the front line 
whether it's World War II, whether it's Vietnam, most of them, uh, Korea, they, they got the model 1911, you know, the A1 or whatever. But you have all kinds of folks involved, you know, support troops, truck drivers, and just everything. And you need firearms for them. And so, uh, you know, you had a lot of these around they brought out of the warehouse. But, all right, a couple more shots. Let's go down here and pop these uh, two liters. Uh, just not feeling confident enough, although the sights seem to be pretty much on. All right. Ah, oh, wounded him. All right, Mr. UT. You need to be shot. All right. <laughs> Let's try that uh, ram over there. At least scare him. All right. Wow. Let's see. Let me try that pig. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, how about a bowling pin here? And I think I have one left. Let's go to the gong. Uh oh, did I miss that? Oh man, I gotta put another round in here. I'm sorry. Since I don't want to disrespect this military firearm, you know. I mean, really, it's a military handgun, and sometimes I, I can quit on a miss, but yeah, not this one. See, there's that one chamber, it kind of sticks a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure it's the same one, because I think it, when it was sticking earlier, it was sticking in a chamber over here on this side. Oh, maybe it was that one. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I'll just put four in, okay? What was I shooting at now? Okay. Oh, I know, I was gonna finish with one of the go. Okay, with a Colt, the cylinder turns clockwise. All right, let me go ahead and put the one on the gong, in case it takes four. Yeah, I think I might be going low. Yeah, we better go back to one hand. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go anyway. <laughs> Let's see, I'm not sure what, no I'm not. I'm not going to let you go yet. Sorry, John. There's more ammo. Okay. I really couldn't tell whether I was going high or low. Of course, I could have been going left or right. You never know. Okay, now these six, if I can't hit the gong with one of these, I will let you go. All right. All right. <sighs> but I'm not going to quit on a miss. I'm going to hit something. All right, I'm going to get a really good hold so that, uh, you know, if you, I'm going to get a good let off so I'll know what's going on here. I'm going to really take my time. I'm going to hold near the bottom of it. And if I don't see dust, that means I'm going high. That looked like hit wood. Three. All right. Well, on that one, I held sort of in the middle. <laughs> All right, cowboy, let's finish up on you. No, let's hit that pumpkin some more. Boom, double action. <laughs> Almost put a face on him. <laughs> All right, there's that cylinder. Okay. So anyway, the 1909, and uh, hope that gives you a little uh, more useless information about the good old new service revolvers and the, you know where they fit in the scheme, the great scheme of things, and how they kind of bailed us out in the Philippines. And, uh, and then again, World War I, when we, we needed more 45s, didn't have enough 1911s, and chambered it in the 45 ACP.
And as I understand, after World War I, a lot of them went to the warehouse, and uh, most of them, in both Smith & Wesson and Colt configuration, uh, you know, the 1917 models, this one here, and then World War II dragged them out again. You know? So revolvers have uh, been with us a long time. They're still very popular, whether you like them or not. They're very, very popular. And, uh, and even if it's not something you're going to carry, they're just so much fun to shoot. So anyway, I'll shut up and uh, let you all go. Just wanted to give you a little information on the, uh, the old 1909 U.S. Army, 1909. Appreciate Simpson Limited uh, sending this to us. And we appreciate everybody that helps us. We, we just, uh, we get more help than we deserve from Bud's Gun Shop, Talon Grip, Ballastall, uh, Federal Premium, SDI.edu, and then atmex.com. Uh, you know, we just uh, appreciate everybody and we appreciate you all coming to watch and it just makes it more fun to have these firearms out and shooting them, uh, being able to share them with people who have a common interest. And I know you have a similar interest. There is a common interest in these firearms, or you would have gone away a long time ago, right? <laughs> Life is good. Oh, hi. Well, I've got you here. I want to let you know about some other places you can find us on the internet and TalonGunGrips.com. So you can find us on Facebook under Hickok45, on Instagram, the real Hickok45. I also run an Instagram called John underscore Hickok45, Hickok45 on Twitter. There's also Hickok45.com, our website, where you can find information about everything that we have going on, basically, all of our supporters. Uh, you can also find our merchandise on Bunker Branding. Dot com so please check all that out when you have time and also please check out talon gun grips uh, dot com we appreciate all of their support in getting attacked by spiders i don't know if they have any products for that or not but you can get a lot of different grips for different types of handguns and rifles um, to give you different types of textures that you may want um, that they can really help you uh, grasp the pistol uh, much better so go to talon gun grips dot com and check everything out that they have and as always read the descriptions in these videos there's a lot of questions you may have that can be answered by the description and also check out the links that we have down there i appreciate it and uh i've got some more uh, shotgunning to do i'll see you guys later <laughs>